deep inside my heart I've got this everlasting light is shining like the sun It radiates on everyone And the more that I get The more I've got to get It's the way that I live It's what I'm living for Deep inside my heart I've got this everlasting light is shining like the sun it radiates on everyone and the more that i get the more i've got to get it's the way that i live it's what i'm living for one more time one more time and then we'll get started maria <laughs> deep inside my heart i've got this everlasting light is shining like the sun it radiates on everyone and the more that i get the more i got to get it's the way that i live it's what i'm living for thank you how's everyone do Ooh. Shall we go aloha? <laughs> Thank you, Maria, for waking us up, getting us going here this morning. How's everyone feeling today? Good, you're going to even feel better as we just go on and on here today. So, first of all, we have had quite a month. Well, who are you, first of all? <laughs> I'm a legend in my own mind, just to let everyone know that. For you who are here for the very first time, I'm Reverend Patrick, and this is the beautiful Reverend Rita. Thank you. Okay. And over here is the beautiful Maria, who's been uh, playing that music for us today. Okay, now can I ask? Yes, now. Okay. <laughs> so we um, have had quite a month so far, and we woke up today and said it's only the 15th, 16th, right? And it feels like so much has gone on this week. So, so much has. We had Lydgate, uh, birthday party. We had the cabaret. We had lots of things that went on this week. Thank you. Our fourth birthday is going on, so we're celebrating all month. So we would just like, if you partake in any of the, the wonderful, wonderful time of helping us out all week, seven days, it's just hard to believe, right? Could you just please stand up and just let us just give you some love, give you some love. Thank you to these people who made it all happen this week. And for those that aren't here, because exactly. <laughs> they're probably sleeping. sleeping somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we woke up today, we went, oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> 5 a.m., I love mm -hmm. it. So uh, we have a couple things happening this month that we just want to let you know about directly. After our celebration service today, we have the men and women's empowerment group that the women stay in here, and then the men go wherever we can find a spot. Actually, we go right by the beach. Um, so that happens right after our social time. And um, we're still celebrating. Usually we have a campaign. Everyone look over to that empty wall over there. Which Roseanne and Rob painted. Roseanne and Rob painted during this week, yes. And so we're creating a global garden. And usually we stop the campaign around the birthday, which was last week. But we've decided to just... just go all crazy and celebrate all month. So what that looks like is the Global Garden Wall, and we'll have trees and flowers and your names on it that are helping to retill as we go on in our, um, our growth process. Here we grow again. So we're going to be doing it. Just contact one of us. We'll let you know. And it's also on the web, www.cslkawaii.org. And so that's happening all, and I'm going to let the lovely And then we have a few upcoming July events, one of them this week, which is uh, Spiritual Living Circles with Rebecca DeRuz back Rebecca there. Right and it, it takes place on Thursday, July 20th from 4 to 5.30. And all they do is sit in an intimate discussion about an article from the Science of Mind magazine and bringing that into their lives. It's a wonderful circle. Um, what else? Oh, and then on July 28th, we will be having a spiritual cinema night. Again, we have one every, every month, at, um, the fourth or the last Friday of the month. And this particular month, we're doing The Giver. I don't know if anybody's seen this film. It's a really interesting film with Very Meryl Streep and Jeff Bridges. Okay. And um, we'll definitely stimulate the discussion that we always have after the film, which is optional. But we have some really great discussions and popcorn, of course. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we're excited. You want to? Yeah, we're about? very excited. Isha's not here, but she kind of prompted this. Uh, we have a, a project here that we call a project called Flying Solo. 
And um, we do that, well, a couple times a year or at least once a year. Very, very popular for those who come. But we want to set it because we've been getting phone calls. When are you going to allow for the eight participants who are in the Flying Solo? We start today. And so Isha had said, when are you doing this? So we have it. September 7th is when it starts. And it will be um, out all of the, the Yeah, all the information about it is on the table back there in the information table. And it's basically taking a, a snippet of your life and um, basically dramatizing it, but not as an actor, as to your real authentic self. And it is a really amazing process. We've done yeah. it two times. This will be our third one. Right. Has anybody ever been to the actual thing or been in it? Yeah. Could the yeah. flying solo participants that have participated in the past please stand? And that way you can <laughs> talk to them. <laughs> that way you can ask them about it. And then right. know that they're still here. They're still here. <laughs> so okay. anyway, we're very excited, and it's not about no acting required, please. Just authenticity. That's all that we're looking for is authenticity. It's six weeks, and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful Only process. eight participants. Okay, so, so now we have an amazing announcement to make. <laughs> I'm very emotional about this. So CSL Kauai was born four years ago and at that time a group of people joined us to take classes and they stuck with it for four years and yesterday they completed it by passing their oral panels. Now this is means that, yeah, this means that Patrick and I had nothing to do with the oral panels. We were not even allowed in the room. We did not know other than assigning this beautiful ladies, please stand Very up. Very painful. <laughs> Dr. Very Peggy painful Price, experience. D Dr. Peggy Price headed the panels with um, two other people from the, um, the mainland, and they had, to, they had to be grilled on what they knew because it was all about their consciousness. So I want to ask those people to just come up here so we can just acknowledge them as yes. licensed religious science pr practitioners. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. there uh, there Roseanne are. Jones. <laughs> Rob Jones. Woo! And Patrick and I never had any children together, but we <laughs> we birthed <And> children. <laughs> and it was four years of labor. <laughs> let me let you know. Oh, okay. yes. We are very proud of them. Oh, we're so, so proud of they you. They are along with our Reverend Diane now, and um, who else do we have? Deborah Vandate are the practitioners of our center who hold the consciousness here, along with Patrick and I, and we're quite a team. Yes. So we're yes. very excited to add these three people to the team. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And it's just amazing, too. I, you, know the, you know when they say you want to know what's going on in a room and you can put a, a glass up against the door? Ooh. Did you know that works? <laughs> I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> we sat patiently out here. So tell these people where we are. <laughs> oh, no, after we do this. <laughs> I'm really directing today. Okay, let's just take a... <laughs> let's just take a deep breath. <laughs> the laughter is so good. Let's take that laughter and just bring it right inside our hearts right now. Let it bubble up there as we recognize that peace begins with us as we do every Sunday lighting this candle and remembering that peace that starts right in our hearts and radiates out into the world. Let's just take a moment of silence to let it bubble up and radiate out. And so it is. So for those of you that are here for the first time, you are in a Science of Mind and Spirit Center called the Center for Spiritual Living, which is a worldwide organization that has centers all over the world, all over the world. And this one particular center, Center for Spiritual Living Kauai, was founded by Patrick and I and has grown from that seed that we planted in mind into this beautiful group of people who is now sitting here and 
sits here every Sunday and is out doing their thing in the world. And what we practice or what we strive to practice is that that spirit, that God, that intelligence, that infinite wisdom, that infinite light, that infinite one source is represented and expressed through each individual person. And there is not a place that we look, we say there's not a spot where God is not. So no matter what's happening, no matter what somebody looks like <laughs> in that moment, that is really what is happening, is that God is expressing itself and to the degree that that person recognizes it. So our job for each other, our help that we give each other is to recognize it in each other, at those t especially at those times when it needs to be recognized. So it's a really beautiful teaching. You could be from any, sing any religion that you practice would feel welcomed here because that's all really that we do. We don't, you know, we don't do anything else besides that and have fun. So <laughs> anyway, I just want to say And have that. lots of events. Um, <laughs> right, right. Uh, so who is here bringing their consciousness today for the very first time in this space? Could you raise your hand? Could you uh, stand? Could you just stand for a moment? Because we just want to love you. Okay. <laughs> there Thank we go. You. Oh, it's beautiful. Yes. There's someone back there. Someone Yay. back there. Okay, so while you're standing and everyone's focused upon you, just to let you know that we know some things about you. And we'd like to share them with everybody that you've not met yet. And uh, I think we'll start with, shall we start with, yeah, let's go ahead. So, You are magnificent. magnificent. <laughs> are, are, and you know that, right? And I'll tell you, you look so relieved right now. That's <laughs> a, that, <laughs> yeah. So what we know about you is that you have came into, come into a space that is just safe and sacred, but we know that you're magnificent because we know it about ourselves. And so can we just all stand and so they don't feel awkward with it, we'll let you know and we'll all say it together with you. I, I am magnificent. magnificent. And that camera back there has some magnificent people. And I also know that Anna Leigh Russell called this morning. She's on there. Michelle LeMay is peeking in right now, probably. And a whole bunch of people from the mainland are wanting to be a part of this. So let's tell them who they are. You are magnificent. Now look to your left, to your right. Tell somebody they're magnificent. Let's get them. No, and it's all right. <laughs> you are magnificent. I think we touched upon everything, right? Let's do it. And Marie is magnificent. You're magnificent, Jesse. You're magnificent. You, you, you are very magnificent. Okay, let's take this. I can't. All right. Let's take this. Let's take this into our opening song. You stay standing. Stay standing. We're going to have our opening right. song. And Jai, switch places. You switched. Let's all sing together. Yes. Love is all there is. Right here and wide open. Love is all there is. I'm here to be open. It's in your program. Love is all there is. We're right here in love always. Always. Love is all there is. Right here and wide open. Love is all there is. Right here to be open. Love is all there is. We're right here in love always. Always. Love is all there is. 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 What I know is love is all there is. Love is all there will ever be. That is the very nature of our being. That's our identity right here and right now. And we celebrate together. Celebrate together knowing that this identity of love, yes, it bounces, it bounces, it bounces. And what I know is that we've come together today for one purpose only, and that is to remember who and what we are. And that is the goodness of life itself. Isn't that right, Loya? I thought so. I hear. Can I hear? Yes. Yes. And that's why we're here to love one another, to see the light in one another, to just experience this thing called life 
together and it doesn't get any better or does it so just let me just say right here right now that i know who you are i know who i am so let's just have this day unfold this time unfold as together we say and so it is love 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 is all there is, right here and wide open. Love is all there is, I'm here to be open. Love is all there is, we're right here in love always, always. Love is all there is, right here and wide open. Love is all there is, I'm here to be open. Love is all there is, we're right here in love always, always. Love is Morning. My name is Malia Reed, and I'm going to um, do the quote and the meditation today. Um, and there's a correction in our um, program today, where it says Malia Reed, practitioner intern. I just wanted everyone to uh, um, to cross out the intern part. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, I, let's just take a moment now to um, just to relax in our seats and um, know that you're in a safe place and that um, we're surrounded with love here and this is um, a comfortable place to be. And if it's comfortable for you to close your eyes, um, please feel free to do that. If not, just open them. It doesn't matter. Just coming into this moment. I'd like to read a quote this morning before our meditation from Romans. It's one of my favorite ones, and um, I just love it. So, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God. Enjoy your quiet time.
this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God. And what I know the will of God is, is that the mind is always renewing itself and we are one with this one mind that I call God, <clears throat> that I call good, that I call infinite intelligence. And it's everywhere present. And we're all one with this infinite intelligence because there is no spot where God is not. So we're all a part of it. It's everywhere. We're all one big family. We're one big mind, one big love. <laughs> and we're all together in this. And um, I am so grateful for this um, service today. And I'm so grateful for not being conformed to this world. <laughs> I'm grateful for the transformation and the renewing of all the minds and of my mind and for the minds of everybody and for the love and the, for the transformation that's always going on and for the love that goes on in this service every Sunday. I am so grateful for that. And I'm just grateful for this coming together and this beautiful outcome of this service today. And I release my word to the law. And as we say together... And so it is. Thank you. And the chant is in your program. Thank you. Thank you, Malia. It's really great. Wow. I don't even know where to start today because <laughs> I had Patrick was looking at all my notes. I don't have them up here, but there were like about this. <laughs> he goes, you're not going to be having any trouble writing a book. <laughs> she got him. But I got it all down to one page and I don't know. Anyway, it's been a week. And I guess the thing that's come for me, this we, we titled our talk, Let It Grow. But I learned from my teacher never to let a talk title hold you back. So, because <laughs> whatever's gonna, I think it may have been Ernest Holmes who said that. But, and if you don't know who Ernest Holmes is, I always have to mention him every week because some people don't know who he is. And he was the founder of um, religious science who never wanted a church, but um, he, his, people thought that he should organize so because so many people wanted to come together and be together and it's just better sometimes to have an organization but all he ever wanted to do was to have people have better lives and to practice it that was his big thing and that's what this teaching is all about is practicing it and I just want to take a moment to just give gratitude for this teaching because I know all the things I've ever been through in my life and still go through I always have something I can fall back on. Something will carry me through it. Something that will know that there's a bottom to whatever's happening in my life. A bottom meaning spirit, grace, that is going to carry me through it. And I'm going to know what to do in that situation if I call upon it. And it always answers yes to me. And I'm just grateful, grateful for it. And um, I was just thinking about this week and all of... 
everything that transpired this week from our birthday celebration last Sunday with over 150 people there, which is like hard to believe in a way because <laughs> we started with knowing nobody really except for one person <laughs> that we didn't even know lived here, Jackie Turner. And um, this thing that took a snowball, like it just rolled and rolled and rolled. And, and I know that there's a place within each of us that has that same thing that rolls and rolls within us when we set an intention that brings it into form and continues to let it grow, if we let it grow. You know that song from Mary Poppins? <laughs> Anything can happen if you let it. And I think that that is the hardest thing for some of us some of the times, I know it has been in my life, is I want to force it. Like one time I wanted to live in the country so bad. I was like, I have to live in the country. I mean, I lived in New Mexico. I don't know how more country you can get than that. But I felt like Albuquerque was too big of a city for me and I wanted to live in the country. So I forced it. I mean, I really forced it. And I ended up in the country and it ended up the biggest disaster in the whole world because then I realized I had to drive to get into... Uh, into um, and I was living in Farmington. That's where it was that I wanted to live in the country. It wasn't even Albuquerque. Farmington, New Mexico, if you were that, know where that is in the four corners. And so we get to the country, and I'm finally living in the country, and it's the biggest disaster because I'm like, and then I'm complaining. And then I end up in one year having to sell a house and move back to the city of Farmington. <laughs> so sometimes you don't let the le this thing called growth happen. You just jump into something and you say, I got to have it. I got to have it now. And you jump into it and you're really not ready for it. And I think that's what um, Ernest Holmes meant when he said at the, to start where, where you are and let just start where you are and grow from there. Because if you jump too far ahead, like, you know, we want to be millionaires. We want to, you know, write that Pulitzer um, Prize winning novel. We want to, you know, win the Peace Prize. We want to, you know, whatever it is that we have that we want to do. We force ourselves into it instead of allowing it to evolve. And there's a man named Thomas Trower. 25% of our teaching comes from him. And he has a chapter in his book, The Edinburgh Lectures, which is not in the bookstore. I don't know if it, it is. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> which is not the easiest book to read, right, Reverend Diane? I mean, it, <laughs> his sentences are about one page long. But what the man had, but the, the guy was a judge, but he was also a mystic. He studied in India and, and studied Hinduism and all that stuff. But he had something in his book called The Law of Growth. And he said, The law is always the same. Our thought forms, our thought forms, a spiritual prototype which, if left undisturbed, will reproduce itself in external circumstances. That's a short part of the sentence. I cut the rest out. <laughs> but, so what he's saying is every time we think something, and if we think it with enough, yeah, right, we think it with enough emotion and enough feeling behind it, it actually forms a spiritual prototype. It actually starts to form an energy that starts to attract the things toward it that need to make it in, that need to make it to complete it. Yes, right. And we've all experienced it, right? In some form, sometimes to the highest of our lives and sometimes no, to the low, right? Yeah. I mean, I've definitely been on both sides of the fence. But if we could really just trust that, that's what this law of growth is about, is about trusting it, about setting the intention and trusting it. But then some other things he says in there is we go in and we try to pull up, we try to force it with, and we get, we end up like anxiety driven and stress and all that stuff. And I'll just bring it back to the cabaret that we performed. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. I don't know. Not all of you were there, but um, it was wonderful, right? Yeah. It was, but we have a thing, we have a thing in theater. And Patrick and I both come from theatrical backgrounds that it has to be hard. In fact, the first song we sing is from another opening, another show, which is like four weeks you rehearse and rehearse, three weeks and it couldn't be worse. One week will it ever be right? And then out of the hat is that big first night. So in other words, you do, it, has an ent it has like a thought form behind it <laughs> that most actors and performers live from that says it's got to be hard, but it will be fine in the end, but no, we're going to get there and it's going to be a struggle the whole way. And, you know, so this came up for me during this and there were lots of struggles, right? We had a lot of experiences that were, that could have held us back, but we had to keep going in, taking a deep breath and reminding ourselves that it all is going to be perfect in the end. It is perfect already. It's already happened, like I've said so many times here. And if I'll just get out of the way 
and let it happen, it unfolds perfectly. So when we were back in the, in the, in the office back there on opening night with beautiful Barbara Davis, we just sat there and we said, we've put in all our work. We've practiced. We've come here every night and showed up. We learned the songs. We did it all. We did all that we can do. In our lives, we have to do what we can do. And then that power within us comes in and does the rest if we let it. So there's a point. It's called surrender. It's like, you know, the time in childbirth when the mother has to give up the, uh, herself to the life of the child. It's called the time of transition where she just lets go and then the birth happens. And that's in every creation. It's that idea of just letting it go and letting it happen and trusting and having us trust and faith because it's all based on faith. And sometimes it's not that hard to do that surrender part because we're in our, in our cellular is that idea of that we have to grab and hold on <laughs> and stress and all of that. And if we can just, when those times come up, if we could just take a deep breath and know that we're always backed. We're always backed. I mean, if you really think about it, I, I, I have to say, I was sitting back there and I was a little nervous the first night and then I saw Janice walk by without her crutch. <laughs> And if, no, if you don't know who Janice is, she, was, she, she had an incredible life experience of a devastating accident that most people would have been, you know, left to be dead, really. And she brought herself through it, through that same power. When I saw her out there against all the odds that people told her and doctors told her walking without her crutch, and I don't know everything about it, Janice, and, but I'm just telling you what you did for me. I thought, why am I so scared to do this little thing that I'm going to do tonight, which is a big thing to me. That same power that is helping Janice right now, assisting her, is moving through her, is the same power that's moving through me. And it's the same power that's moving through all of you. The same exact power. All men and women are created equal. That is the truth. And the question is, how much of it do we recognize of it. And I'm so sorry about that we don't have a youth center yet, but we are going, we're working on it. <laughs> okay. And it'll be opening and birthed into a new thing in, in September. So yes, it will. Anyway, so how much of it are we willing to let ourselves use is my question for all of us today. And how much are we going to hold on and grasp it? Or how much are we just going to relax? Because every journey, even the, the most difficult journeys, can really be, I think everything in life is amazing. Even the most, that can seem horrendous journeys can be amazing. And I mean, I watched Barbara, our accompanist, go through some really devastating life events while we were rehearsing. And she just moved herself through it in the most amazing way, using music and that energy as her healing force. So that healing force, whether it's music or whatever it is for any of us, is always there for us. And this is what Thomas Troward said, and I'm going to close with it. He said, and this is one, a longer sentence, so I'm going to break it down. <laughs> he said, we do not put the self-expansive vitality into the seed. So in other words, the vitality is already in the seed that we're growing. It's already there. We don't put that in there, okay? But we must sow it, and we must also, so to speak, water it by quiet, concentrated contemplation of our desire as an actually accomplished fact. That is the key to this teaching. It's the key to all of it. How does that feel? It feels peaceful, right? Like if, you could, if we could just do that and just relax into it and not not specify where it's coming from because we have no idea how it's going to happen. I have no idea how you're all sitting here today. I know we took certain steps, but I have no idea how it really happened because it happened through that force moving through it. It's not me or, or Patrick. It's within us and it's moving through us. And each of you have that same force with whatever your dreams are, whatever your desires are, whatever things you're working out in your life. That same force is moving through you if you let it. And he says, to finish that quote, we must carefully remove from such contemplation, right? 
that quiet contemplation. We must remove any idea of strenuous effort on our part to make the seed grow. We can't force things to happen before it's time for them to happen. If I had gotten ha- if I had met Patrick when I was 20 years old, I don't think we'd be standing here today because I wasn't ready for him. I wasn't ready for this mate. <laughs> I got exact. <laughs> It's true, right? It is, right? (laughs) I'm done forcing things to happen. I live a really wonderful life, an amazing life, but I've grown into my life. I've grown into it. And it's it's been amazing the whole time. You know, I might not have seemed like it was at the times, and I've done a lot of struggling, but it has been amazing. And I got exactly what I was mentally equal to. That's a really hard thing to people to hear sometimes. You get what you're mentally equal to. They call it the mental equivalent. That's a book, too, which we have to order. It's a little pamphlet. But and there's also a chapter in the Science of Mind textbook that's the mental equivalence. We can't get more than we're mentally equal to. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing because you wouldn't be able to handle it. That's why the only thing we ever grow, the only thing practitioners treat for when you meet with them is consciousness, because consciousness is what does the growing. It's so simple, guys, really. (laughs) So, yeah, so Ernest Holmes wrote, let us be happy to begin right where we are and grow. Let us be happy to begin right where we are and grow and be happy and be glad to be ourselves and to trust the universe. It's got our back. Namaste. (laughs) Yeah. And I 
I've been trying, but I don't know how. I'm so grateful we are finally together. I just want to be wrapped up in your arms forever and ever and ever. So soothing, yes? Yeah. Wow. Thank you for loving me. Nice place to start, right? Thank you for loving me, for loving us, for loving each other. Have you ever been through like a week and you've been like, I gotta get to this, I gotta get to this, I gotta get to this, and then all of a sudden today in this moment, and I'll promise I'll wait till after the uh, service, but it's kind of that letting down and just, whoo, what just happened this week, right? What just happened in life? Um, I have this wonderful uh, quote since we were so theatrical. Uh, does anyone know who Maggie Smith is, the great uh, actress? She says, I like the ephemeral thing about theater. Every performance is like a ghost. It's there, and then it's gone. It's there, and then it's gone. Boy, we've been going through that this week, and we go through that in our life. And it reminded me of, uh, we had a wonderful um, housekeeper that, that took care of my mom's little place and ours when we were in L.A. And... Um, she would help us out when we'd have a party. And when Rita and I would entertain, we would just like say, oh, well, let's just have a few people over. And then as security guards have to be hired in order to have the... Uh, so that was kind of our nature. It's like on Christmas Eve, we said, you know, just the people don't have anywhere, you know, come on over to our house. And, and, and it's like, wow, you know. So we would always um, hire her to help things run smoothly. And I still remember she would leave at the end of the night and she would look back at the house and she would say, it's like it never happened. <laughs> it's like it never happened. And there's a good feeling with that, right? If you've ever had a party or you have anything or you've had a few events, you have to clean it all up, right? <laughs> And so there's something about that. And I woke up thinking about that this morning. It's like it never happened, but it did. But it did. And um, that's really where I want to go with this. I mean, what a month so far. We had the birth of our country on the 4th. We had a birth of that. We had CSL's fourth birthday. Birth of a cabaret transformation of this center. Thank you, Deborah Valentina and her wonderful team that, that took this place. And as I look out now, it's like it never happened. Isn't that correct? And it was beautiful to watch Deborah's face as we completely, you know, the cabaret, thank you, thank you, oh my gosh, and dim lighting, and it was just so romantic. And then the lights went on, it's like, all right, let's get it back to the church. All right. And then I could see, I could see Deborah just going, oh, this is, this is lovely. She's been through it before, but it's like you create something, right? And then it's like, all right, we're on to something else now. And I really looked at that all week, that idea of balance in our lives. 
of not just getting through it so fast and on to the next thing, the next intention, the next event. And you know me, I'm not, um, I'm not for standing still. I'm all about change. But as I watch this week of Lydgate coming together in this beautiful Sacred Earth Choir and all the volunteers and everybody coming together to make it happen, and then we moved on, right? Oh my gosh, everything's back to the center. Now let's get this place transformed into a cabaret, you know? And I love that. That's called community. That's called transformation. My God, I was watching that. Um, I love this thing about alchemists. I love alchemists. I love the book, as a matter of fact, too. And it says the definition of alchemy is a power or process that changes or transforms something in a mysterious or impressive way. I was quite impressed this week with all of us. It doesn't even matter if you're here, if we're there, or which one you were at. It doesn't matter. You're here now. And this is the time of transformation. We watch this place turn into something else. And I watched Rita and I and experienced Rita and I transforming ourselves. And one of the biggest things that um, happened for me about transformation was the cabaret meant something to me more than just putting on a show. It was very important to me to not put on a show. It was so important for me to show up. And that transfers over to life. One of my lessons since I moved here is authenticity. And I always thought I was very authentic. Not everyone thought that, just to let you know, because I have a very, very, very big personality. And that can sometimes be misunderstood. And it's something that I have worked through to the point of uh, nausea, actually. Uh, 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 because I had to find the balance for me. And I like being big in my personality. It's who I am. But then there's also the authenticity. But what I found was trying to make it okay for everybody out there to, to be okay with me in here was exhausting and unnecessary. So unnecessary. So I learned through the cabaret and, 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 and as we looked and we played music that it was healing. It was another form. We are a healing and a teaching center. And I saw healing and experienced it from what people told me that I was, I was in awe because w what I heard, and it wasn't about my ego going, oh, I just want to hear this because I'm sure other people had other opinions as well. And I'm so glad they kept them to themselves. So, but <laughs> because you know my motto, if you've got something to say about me, say it behind my back. I mean, <laughs> or bring it to me, you know. So... And I'm talking about things I love. I'm, I'm digressing. I love Brene Brown. And, what, and I love her because she talks my language. And she says, you know, if you're sitting on the sidelines, judging and critiquing, and you're not willing to get in the arena, I'm not interested in your feedback. <laughs> and I'm really about that. That's what I mean. If you're not in here with me in this arena then talk behind my back because I'm not interested in anyone's feedback that's not willing to get in at the level, the degree that they are and to, to get in the arena of your life. That's the best part. So I was thinking of this whole idea of healing and what it was and I kept hearing was we love the way you looked at one another. And that was part of the, the magic of the evening. But, but really what, what I, I realized, that another gift I have, is sometimes in a relationship, whether it be friends or mothers, fathers, it doesn't matter, you take it for granted sometimes. Now, Rita and I really have our relationship thing down, but we're always reminding each other, let's not have it too down. 
That's when things happen that get real crazy. Oh, I got the relationship thing down. Let's work on this over here. And the whole time, and what I realized when I was standing up here and we were singing, I went, and I said it, I think, on the second night, I haven't looked in her eyes that much in 16 years, that much. In one evening, we had that staring at it, you know, not gazing, but not like that. But, uh, <laughs> but all of a sudden, I looked in her eyes and I went, oh my God, I see you. I see you. And it looks good. It looks good. And I know she felt the very same way about me. <laughs> so, one other little piece of this week was I realized, um, so we get this, and then Friday night everybody's putting chairs back, and, and, and Deborah's like all settled into it now. It's like, there it goes. And then we went home, and then we ran back the next day, and then Powerful or Powerless was here in the morning, and then I'm like, oh, my God. We're birthing a baby, ba three babies this afternoon at one o'clock. And it was just like, oh, no, 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 I have to sleep. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, pow, we're in these panels with these three beautiful, you know, we're like mom and dad. And I was so busy. I was like going, okay, the flying solo. And I'm on the, the computer right over here. I'm thinking, man, you're already on that. You're about ready to have a baby, man. And you're a man. You're going to birth these babies right now. And so I don't know if, and I'm going to be really honest because you know that's all I ever do. Um, there's something about, even though what I know is that each and every one of them were going to pass that panel, there's still, have you ever heard that voice? That one that goes, but what if? Oh, no, 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 no. That is not even a possibility. But there's still that moment. I said to Rita, I said, wow, I got stomachache because I was going, because I was living through them, for them, and it was reminded me, and this is going to shock a lot of people, but this is, I'm going to use a football analogy. I know. It's like in the, in the cabaret, the fishing one, just, I don't know, it just doesn't work. Here's the thing about, it was like training a team to go out and play the game. And this is the emotional part, because I wanted to throw the ball for them. And I couldn't. They had to pick the ball up, run with it, kick it, throw it, whatever they do in football. Um, <laughs> whatever they do with the, in, in that game. Um, and, or throw it over or run it through. But it was just a moment. And this isn't just for them. This is in life. Sometimes you love so deeply you want to do it for them. And at the end of the day you have to go through your own touchdown. And that's what this teaching means to me. That's what this community means to me, that we can assist you on your way to your touchdown. Because we're always, always playing this game of life. But boy, do I want to do it for you. Because it's that father thing that says, let me make it all right for you all the time. And then they finally say, Dad, I, I got to do this on my own, just like I did, just like everyone did. But in the meantime, before you need to do it, you have love here. You have a safe, safe place here to be nurtured, to be loved, to help you grow, and to be there applauding you when you make your touchdowns in your lives. That's what... My purpose is, that's what my fourth year here at this center is dedicated to. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. And I love you. Namaste. Wow, what a week. I think we're just going to take a day off tomorrow and just Here like, we are cry. We're taking cry and stare at each other. We get, <laughs> <laughs> we get, we get two week days off this week because we should take one last week. Yeah. 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 Okay. So um, I think we're here. Um, we are here 
um, at our time of giving. And um, I just want to thank everybody that's given, oh my God, to the center over those four years and continues to give. And I go, wow, that is a really huge demonstration when somebody takes something out of their pocket and puts it in a basket, no matter what it is, and says, I believe in this and I want it to grow. So thank you in advance for the giving and the giving of consciousness, the giving of finances, the giving of time, the giving of talent, mm -hmm. the giving of it all. And I, I know that it returns back to you a hundredfold. So there is an affirmation in our program that we get to read together. And it says, divine, divine love, love consecrates, consecrates my gift. gift. It, it goes, goes forth, forth to heal, heal prosper, prosper, and bless. bless. It is evidence of my conviction that God is the source and substance of my supply. I give freely today, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. All right. today for the abundance that's everywhere present and for all the gifts and ties and I'm so grateful that CSL Kauai gives 10% of whatever comes in to the need that is out there in Kauai and I'm just so proud of that and I'm just grateful for the avalanche of abundance that's here and right now in all of our lives and I am so happy about that and as we say together I release it and I say and so it is Thank you. Thank you, Malia. I love that. <laughs> Avalanche. I love that. That is idea. true. If you don't know that, that we do, we're a tithing center, so 10% goes back out into the world of what you give here. It's a good thing. And we have this, and thank you for that reminder, Reverend Diane. We have our, our fund here that we. Which uh, we have to count. Yes. She sa <laughs> just so you know, party. she says that every, every Sunday. <laughs> we need to count that. So somebody talk to Rita and go count with her. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, this is our building fund. We start where we are, right. and this is where we are, and this, is, and this is our future. There's 700 and some odd dollars in the bank right now. But That's right. And there's probably just as much in there, I bet. That's right. <laughs> okay, so, um, all right, a couple of things. We, first of all, we don't, I want to just mention that we don't, like I said, have a children's center right now. Um, we are putting it together. Janice is recuperating George. from her and George. And we'll be putting that together over the next month and we'll reopen it in September in all its vitality and growth. So that's what we're doing with that. But we do like to do a blessing of the children while we're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's just take a moment to bless all the children in the world and send our love and our peace to all the children in the world, knowing that not just the ones in this room, but beyond this room are always guarded, protected, and loved, and that that grace, that thing that we talked about today is there for them and always and that whatever they need is right where they are. I know that, I claim that, I announce it, and I let it be so with love as we say together. And, and so, so it is. is. And today, after service, we every day after service, we have practitioners in service here that will treat with you if you want to have a prayer. 
And um, that's just a knowing of the truth. It's, it's just if something's going on in your life and you just need a moment of remembering who you are, there we'll do that with you. And it will be Reverend Diane today and Malia Reed. And they'll just be up here after service for about 10 minutes if you want to come up and, and chat with them or find out more about spiritual mind treatment. And um, we also have a box in the back, right? That, a treatment box where you can just put your requests there of what you'd like to experience in your life. And we will know the truth, knowing that it's already there and it's revealing itself. Yeah. And it always says yes. And, what, and have I forgotten anything? Nope. No? Nope. I think we're right on target here. All right. And then a men and women's group is after, but we will have our little social hour. Thank you, Roseanne. Thank you, Roseanne. Um, <laughs> I, see um, after. Carrots. I see carrots. I see Cheese. Turnovers. Oh, oh, I see. Lots of leftovers wow. from the from the cabaret. <laughs> All right, let's get. Let's get yeah. No, I just saw a sudden saw a vegetable plate, and I just knew it would make somebody very so happy. So let's rise and do our closing <laughs> song. <laughs> now you're all hungry, aren't you? <laughs> Let go, let the spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for love. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for love. I really. Let go, let the spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for love. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for love. Thank you, thank you. I am so grateful right now. I am so grateful for this beautiful time that we've had together. I am grateful for everything that's transpired here, for the consciousness that has been risen within us and with and within the world just because we were here today. I know that and I claim that. And I give great thanks for this time together. And I give great thanks to the people who serve today, to two greeters, Katie and Harry, to practitioner in service, RSCP, Malia Reed. <laughs> yes to myself for doing the programs to the to the flowers that are left over from the cabaret from deborah valentina thank you and loya thank you so much for bringing that beauty here to roseanne who's heading hospitality today with everybody that's helping her who i don't know but thank you thank you for helping roseanne today and to reverend diane who's in the bookstore and will tell you anything you want to know about any of the Science of Mind books there and any books there. And to Maria Christina, thank you for doing the music for us today. And to Jonathan back there for the beautiful sound. And he's now back there. Have you noticed that? That he's back there thanks to some generous donations that came through. And to Rob for live streaming us and making sure that the world knows that we're here on this beautiful island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Wow, it's amazing when we think about it, right? So thank you, thank you. We are blessed, and I know that we continue to be blessed as we go out into the world and carry this love out there. So let's just go and do it. And so it is. I release and I let go Let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for love more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for love. Mahalo. Mahalo. And so it is. Aloha.